Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Aquarium of the Pacific's Online Academy. My name is Dana. I'm a member of the education team here at the Aquarium. And to do today in the studio, I am joined by so many friends. We have Jen back here, who's going to be controlling what's going on the screen behind me. We have James, who's going to be taking your questions and fielding them into us uh, here on screen. And then I'm, we're joined by two new staff members who are going to be helping us out, learning the ropes. And then you'll see them in front of the screen here in a couple of days. So it's an exciting day at our online academy. We're excited to have you joining us uh, throughout this next program. We're going to be talking about fishy fun. So talking all about different fish, what colors they are, what shapes they are, and discovering as much as we can about what it means to be a fish. Now throughout the program, we do invite you to text us at this phone number right down here. It's 562-286-1838. If you're watching this after our live stream, please email us right here at live, I know it's confusing because we're not live, at lbaop.org. So live stream, go ahead and text us, okay, right there. <laughs> and then if you're watching after the live stream, go ahead and email us right here. We want to be able to answer as many of your questions as we can on air. We don't always get that opportunity, so James will be asking or answering as many as he can at the computer. Remember, there's only one of us over there, so sometimes it can get a little overwhelming. And then, if we're uh, if you have more questions after the live programming, again, we do have that email address available for you, and we can get to that um, as soon as we can. So we, like I said, want to answer as much question as many questions as we can, provide as much information as possible. Um, but with that in mind. Let's talk about the next half hour, all right? So throughout this programming, we're going to be talking about fish, like I said, and we're going to start by putting on our thinking caps. We're going to be scientists, okay? So grab your thinking cap out. Oh, I can't find mine. Oh, there it is. Oh. All right. Are you ready? All right, my friends. So we are all scientists now. And before we dive too deep, I want you to think, what exactly does a scientist do? Hmm. Well... What do you think a scientist does? I think scientists make observations. They look at things, right? Does that sound right? Okay. I think scientists ask questions, which with this question number right here, we already provided you for that opportunity. But if you have questions that you don't want to text in, even just thinking about them can count as well, right? Sometimes I walk down the street and I have so many questions and inside my head, I'm like, hmm, I wonder, hmm, I noticed, gee, what does that mean, right? So you can ask questions about anything. Now, scientists make observations. They ask questions. What else does a scientist do? Do you have any ideas? Ooh, scientists study things. Yeah, they might ask those questions. They might look at them. They might take in information and then try to study that and remember it. Anybody else in the studio have ideas of what a scientist might do? <laughs> well, we had mixed chemicals and light fires. And actually, as funny as that is, it's kind of uh, spot on because that, to me, sounds like making mistakes. And yes, yeah, scientists are always making mistakes and then learning from it, right? Sometimes it takes trial and error to discover as much as you can. So while we were thinking more chemists and then I was thinking more biologists, um, there's all sorts of, uh, of facets that a scientist can be involved in. So today, we're going to work on the questions and observation aspect. How about that? No chemicals, no fires, all right? All right, my friends. So we're going to start by practicing whatever is on the screen behind us. I have no idea what's coming. We're going to make observations, okay? Ooh. What do you notice? Hmm. I see orange fish too. Yeah, right here. What else do you see? Looks like we've got some questions coming in already, so that's good. Mm, let's see. Ooh, a shark. Well, I just blocked it, but there's a shark over here. <laughs> so there's a lot of animals inside this, this uh, image right here. We've got another fish moving. What else? Somebody said algae. You notice the algae that's coming behind me? Yeah. So this image on our screen right here, this is one of our exhibits here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. This is our Amber Forest exhibit, and it's modeled after a kelp forest habitat. What do you notice about the fish? Are they all moving around a lot, or are they staying still for the most part? Let's look. Hmm. Kind of both, huh? These fish in the middle here are sort of just staying still. 
but that one was moving around. That shark was moving around. Um, that one's still moving around. That's the active one right over there. Now keep your eyes right over in this corner. I know it's blocked by the text question, but you can kind of see this bright orange fish that just came into the screen. That's a really special fish because that's actually the California State Marine Fish. Now that's a fancy way of saying this represents our golden state, right? Um, for example, we have the state flower, which is the poppy, and they're actually the same color. All right, so we saw that shark again. So my question and my observation, they kind of go hand in hand. I noticed that some of the fish are just floating and some of the fish are moving. Well, I wonder how a fish just hangs out and stays in one spot like this individual right there. Hmm. Well, perhaps this fish has a special thing inside of their body that helps them stay in the water column. Now, that was super scientific, but my friends, it's called a swim bladder. And it's just like an, uh, a gas bladder in their body that they can fill up like a balloon and it helps them go up, 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 up. Or they can let the gas go and they go down, 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 down. And if they want to hang out right in the middle, what do you think they do? Yeah, it's kind of half full, right? So that was a really great observation, a great question, and then we got to learn and discover a little bit more about it. Now, Gage wants to know, oh, why do frogfish camouflage? Great question, Gage. I'm going to answer this next question, and then we'll go explore some frogfish. So the next question was, how many types of fish are there? Okay, so there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 30,000. Did you get that number? Yeah. So there's over 30,000 species of fish out there in the world, which is a lot. We'd be here all day, all night, all day tomorrow, probably for the next week straight, just to name them all, right? So lots and lots of different kinds. All right, my friends. So let's go check out that frogfish like Gage wants to know. Ugh. Okay, I'm going to step off screen and I'm going to let you make as many observations about this animal as you can, okay? Hmm. Oh my gosh, you guys are right. It has a super funny frown right here. I wonder why that is. What else do you see? Hmm. I am having a hard time finding any eyeballs. Do you see eyeballs? Oh, those two things right there. Right there is an eye. And right there is an eye. But that one's kind of facing away from us, right? Now, the color in this one in particular is bright orange. So it's, it's similar to that Garibaldi. It's a little more muted. Um, but Gage wanted to know, why do they camouflage? And so just by looking at this fish, I know it's a really funny looking fish. It's kind of different than most fish we think of. But the fact that it looks so funny is how and why it camouflages. So when you think about it, ooh, here's one. There, wait, where's one? That, that whole thing's the fish, of course. So there's those two eyes, one right there and one right there, okay? And so this fish camouflages because did you notice how hard it was for me to see it just now? Well, the same thing happens for a predator. If a predator is cruising through the ocean looking for a meal and they can't see the fish, that fish is doing pretty good, right? So that's why fish camouflage, not just the frogfish, but all sorts of fish as well. Now, Michael wants to know, are fish sitting, ooh, why are the fish sitting still in Amber Forest? Okay, great. Let's jump back to Amber Forest here. I know we're bouncing around a lot today. So we'll go back to Amber Forest. And why are the fish sitting still? So think about it. What are you doing right now? Are you standing in your living room doing jumping jacks? <laughs> I hope not. Well, maybe you should be, right? Sometimes we get a little stuck on the couch. But for the most part, we are not moving around all the time, right? For example, right now, there's a good chance that you're sitting in a chair or sitting on a couch or sitting on the floor or sitting anywhere, right? Well, you can kind of think of this as that fish just sitting. They're not expand, uh, expending energy right now. They're kind of saving energy to get away from a predator, to go after prey, right? They need to make sure that they're able to do the things that, um, that keep them alive. So if there's nothing to threaten them right now, they can just kind of hang out. Now, Aiden wants to know, do humans have a swim bladder? Great question, Aiden. <sighs> humans don't have a swim bladder, 
but our lungs can kind of do the same thing. Imagine right now, we're all going to put our, 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 our swimsuits on, okay? All right, I got my swimsuit on. I'm ready to go. And we're going to jump into a pool or a lake or a puddle, whatever kind of water we can. Now, if we had a big breath like this, <gasps> usually we're kind of bobbing on the surface, right? But if you let all the air out of your lungs, it's easier to sink. So while our lungs are not designed to be a swim bladder, they kind of do the same thing. They help in that special word is actually called buoyancy. Now, for the most part, humans will just float, right? So um, you can think of the swim bladder as like closed off lungs. It helps them go up or down, just like our lungs help us float or help us sink. All right. Now, Jacob wants to know, do fish play dead to avoid predators? That's a great question, Jacob. Um, I'm having a hard time thinking if I know of any fish that play dead. Oops, I'm losing my mic here. Can anybody in the studio think of a fish that actively plays dead? All right. So the consensus is they stay still and they camouflage just like that frogfish but they're not actually playing dead. They're just trying not to exist. Right? So that's how fish are going to avoid predators is they're going to hide, they're going to camouflage, and then they're not going to move, right? All right. So it looks like we wrapped up for questions right now. It sounds like we're getting a lot more, but let's talk about some other fish that might have to defend themselves. So I'm going to let Jen put any picture of a fish that defends itself on the screen. She just got really excited. She's like, oh, let me look at all my photos. So let's give her a drum roll. Ready? <gasps> Keep drumming. Keep going. She's going to make us work hard for it. <laughs> Ding! Ah, too soon. <laughs> okay. Oh, one of my favorites. So this funny looking fish behind me. Yes, it's a fish. This is called a garden eel. Now, garden eels are eels, and so they have this long, kind of slender body. They do have gills, just like other fish. They're right up in here. They have an eyeball, and they have a mouth, right? But where is this fish? Let's take a look. What is this fish doing? Hmm. Well, is that the whole fish, I wonder? Or am I only seeing part of it? What's this funny looking thing in the front? Well, my friends, that is just another garden eel, but it's out of focus. So it looks like there's one here and one there. Ooh, there might even be one right here. So it looks like there's a handful of garden eels in this photo, but we can only see part of them. And that's because garden eels, they like to go whoop down in this little hole. They like to bury themselves in the sand right here. We zoomed in a little bit. Yes, yeah, I think that green spot is another eyeball. And so they like to bury themselves in the sand right here. And that's how they protect themselves from predators. They have this nice safe home that they're able to whoop, duck into. And it looks like we have a video coming up. So I'm going to let Jen pull that up. All right. What do you notice? Do you think there's a predator or do you think it's safe? I'm not sure the eels know. So see how they're kind of like, oh, I'm not sure. Mm, oh, I don't know. Now we have a really great video, uh, not this one, but one way that I learned about how garden eels protect themselves is by watching a video of when a predator did arrive. Now we have this great video of a shark that swims by and these eels all disappear when that shark shows up. And then as soon as that animal went off the screen, the eels come back. So those movements we saw just now, that was one way that that animal is kind of checking out their environment. Have you ever played in hide and go seek with your friends? Well, did you walk around nice and confident like this? Or were you sneaking a little bit like that? So those eels were doing the same thing. Now, Nisa wants to know, why don't the sharks eat the fish? Great question. I think you're referencing our leopard shark in our amber forest exhibit, but let's go ahead and put tropical gallery on and see all the sharks and fish living together. So sharks in the ocean do eat fish. 
And sharks at the aquarium do eat fish as well. However, we provide the sharks with fish specifically for lunch or breakfast or dinner or levensies, right? So our sharks, oh, of course, there's none on the screen right now. <laughs> um, we've got a, oh, there's one. So we've got a zebra shark right over here. And they are fed up at the top of the exhibit over here. It's off screen where you can't see. But because those animals know that food is coming, they don't um, spend or waste the energy chasing after prey in their exhibit. Now in the ocean, again, they might be eating the fish that are around them. But believe it or not, sharks don't actually eat that often. And so um, you can be in the ocean and see fish and sharks side by side. Now, Aubrey wants to know, do many types of fish live in a house in the ocean? Great question, Aubrey. So we talked about that garden eel and that sand that it kind of whoop, tucked into was kind of like a home. Now let's think, all right? That's another job of scientists. Do scientists think? <sighs> Are there any other fish that live in a home? There's a lot of them. A lot of fish will bury in the sand, just like this eel right here. Some fish, their home might be a little bit different than what we're used to. So um, that kelp that was in the exhibit earlier in our amber forest exhibit, some fish tuck right in there with the blades. In fact, they're called kelp fish. And they camouflage to look like their home. And they look like a little kelp blade. Excuse me. So if we can actually, while you're looking, if we can pull up that amber forest footage... Um, beautiful. So we're going to get that up and I'll kind of talk about the, the algae that I'm talking about. Okay. So this right here. So this is giant kelp and it's very common off of our coastline here in California. I know we have some viewers from New York today. We've got some viewers who are driving through Idaho. We've got people all over the country and all over the world. But if you were in California, you might have seen this giant kelp before. And so the fish I was talking about, this would be their home and they go like hang out right here, kind of hard to get the right angle. Anyway, they would tuck in and blend in with this blade. That could be a fish and we wouldn't even know. So it's a different home than us, right? It doesn't have four walls and doesn't have a roof, but it is still its home. Ah, beautiful. We've got a sarcastic fringe head. Yes, that's the name of a fish. We're going to pull that up and show you because this is another animal that lives, check it out, in a home. Okay, now this looks like a very grumpy girl fish, but this is a great fish, everyone. Sometimes when we think fish, we just think like a goldfish, right? Very simple, but fish can be all sorts of shapes. We've looked at the eel, we've looked at the frogfish, and now we're checking out this sarcastic fringe head. Now this big frown right there, that's the mouth. And what's great about this fish is they open their mouth, whoo, really, really wide. And you can get two sarcastic fringe head. What a funny name, right? With mouths wide open and they're trying to battle to get the home. Okay. And so uh, sarcastic fringe head are often found in little cracks and crevices. Uh, they're also found, it looks like this one might be tucked into an old shell maybe. Um, so there's all sorts of homes that it can, prov uh, that it can find and, and live in, which is really special. And again, Grumpy gills. But that mouth can really open up nice and wide. Now, Loki wants to know, can fish breathe air? Ah, oh, great question, Loki. So all the fish we've shown, shown you so far all have gills, right? Gills are um, like feathery little pieces right over here that take oxygen out of the water. Their gills are designed to take oxygen from the water. Where Oh, here's perfect. These are gills. So water goes in the mouth, it goes over the gills, and then it comes back out. Now, we don't have gills, which is why you and I cannot breathe underwater. Okay? So if a fish had a gill, can they breathe in air? Hmm. Not really. So most fish have to spend their whole life in the water. However, there are some fish that have figured out ways to come out onto land. One of them we actually have here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, and that's called the mud skipper. Now, mud skippers, oh, so cool. What they do is they go like this. And their gills, they have gills for underwater, but their cheeks 
are actually adapted to take oxygen out of the air. Now, it's not lungs like you and I, but their cheeks do the work for them. And it's so cool that it allows this fish to come out on land. Um, let's see. Lucy wants to know why are fish um, different colors? That's a good question, Lucy. Well, let's look at uh, any exhibit that Jan wants to show us and we'll see what kind of colors we can see. So fish come in all different colors because fish live in all different habitats. Fish, um, habitat is a type of home, right? Ooh, look at these, these are very colorful fish. Now they live in a coral reef and coral reefs are very colorful. And so fish can be different colors to help blend in and camouflage in their environment. Fish can be different colors because sometimes the color that you are helps you find a mate, right? It helps you find a boyfriend or a girlfriend. And so these fish are actually really special. You can tell which one is the boy and which one is the girl based on their color patterns. Now, other reasons that fish might be different colors could be communication. In fact, some fish can even switch colors. Some fish can flash really bright colors if they're trying to give you like a warning. Um, in fact, speaking of warnings, that bright orange Garibaldi that we saw earlier, that was kind of down in the boop boop little of the screen, that fish is nice and bright and orange because that fish is kind of mean, okay? So this fish right here, I know it looks very cute, but it's mean. This fish is only about that big, and yet they'll chase off a scuba diver, and they'll be like, this is my territory, okay? And that bright orange color actually tells us that because if you were scared of predators and if you were concerned about being seen, you would want to blend in, right? If you're bold enough to be bright orange and stand out, that usually means you're territorial. You might be venomous, right? So there's really special ways to protect yourselves. Let's see. Um, Aiden wants to know, are there fish that look like Mickey Mouse? Huh. Not that I can think of Aiden, and not that James was able to think of either. So if there is a fish out there that looks like Mickey Mouse, maybe you could be the one to discover it. Because that's the amazing thing. Earlier I mentioned that there's over 30,000 species of fish, but there's still a lot left for us to discover. So we might not have a Mickey Mouse fish right now, but we might in the future. Let's see. Uh, what do frogfish eat? eat. Hmm. What's that? Nope. Um, what do frogfish eat? Frogfish, I believe, eat plankton um, and small creatures that live in the, the water. So plankton is like, um, they can be zooplankton, which are little animals that are just very tiny. Now, Mrs. Um, is that Mrs. Chang's class? Why aren't the bigger fish eating the smaller ones? And do they get along? Yeah, that's a great question. So just like when the sharks aren't eating the fish, the bigger fish don't eat the little fish because we also are providing them with food. Now out in the natural habitat, you might see large fish chasing after little ones, but I have another question for you. I asked earlier if you're always moving, right? Now my next question is, are you always eating? Yes, mostly, but we shouldn't be, right? And so uh, large fish like our sharks or large fish like that we might have here in our shark lagoon habitat are not eating each other because they are getting plenty of food. Uh, Caitlin wants to know, is the fringe head poisonous? Um, no. In fact, James apparently has also been bitten by ours. Yep. That's got to be a fun story. <laughs> so um, no, they are not. The sarcastic fringe head is not poisonous. Um, Aubrey wants to know, how do young fish protect themselves? I love this. So, um, let's see. This is, uh, this is the exact picture I wanted you to bring up. Thank you, Jen. So this is that really territorial Garibaldi that I talked about just a minute ago, right? The one that's kind of mean, but this looks a little different. What do you notice about this fish? Ah, there's different colors, right? So even though this is the same species of fish, it looks different. And that's because this one's a baby. So baby Garibaldi, one way that um, they're able to protect themselves is these blue spots are a form of communication, like we said, that helps tell those really territorial adults that I'm just a little one. I'm not here to take your home. I'm just passing through. 
Okay, so just like that, this is a form of communication that allows them to protect themselves when they're dealing with um, very territorial adults. So it looks like we're wrapping up on questions. Those were awesome. Now we're going to end this. We have a couple minutes left and we're going to go back to um, an exhibit or uh, we're going to do two. We're going to do an exhibit and then we're going to do a photo of a fish and we're going to make as many observations as possible. Now, if you want to text some of them in, please do. Again, that phone number is 562 286-1838. Or if you're watching after our live programming, email us at live at lbaop.org. But I want you to just look at these fish. What observe? Oh, that's not a fish. It looks like maybe this is a hydrovac. Is that, or is that, oh, is that the bubble wall? Oh, okay. I didn't realize we could see a wall from here. So this is um, a bubble wall. We have a, this is the window of the exhibit, and we have a, a pipe that goes right around, right around here, and it releases bubbles, and that's one way of aerating the water. Um, it's also kind of a, a way of keeping the fish from checking out the glass a little too close. <laughs> All right, so let's make some observations. Okay, I'm just going to start shouting them out. I notice that there's a lot of fish moving around. I see a lot of algae. I see rocks. Uh, my friends in the studio, if you want to shout out observations, please join. Um, I see that a fish is getting really close to the camera. Ah, Jen sees things on the rocks, definitely. Um, James noticed that my favorite fish was in front of the camera. Ooh, Sarah noticed that some fish are moving faster than others. I noticed that this fish right there has like triangle fins. They're kind of pointy. Ooh, I noticed that one's really long and skinny that just went behind the kelp there. What else do we notice? Okay, I, I noticed that that one has a black bar down its body. Do you see that right there in the center? Hmm. Ah, James noticed that a lot of the fish are silver. Let's see. Ooh, Jen noticed that some fish have dots on them. I noticed that this algae is a lot brighter than the surrounding algae. Hmm. All right, my friends. So that was a really great practice in just sharing, making and sharing observations. You can go anywhere in the world and say, what do I notice? You can look around. You can practice this right now, wherever you are. Look around. What colors do you see? What shapes do you see? What sounds do you hear? Right now, I hear something that sounds like a vacuum. I wonder if they're cleaning the Great Hall, right? So you can observe your environment in so many different ways. Now we're going to do the same thing on another fish. We're going to let Jen pull up a fish and we're going to make observations. Oh, yes, I love it. Okay. I notice polka dots. Ah, Jen noticed that some of its fins are clear. I noticed that some of its fins are like a lot brighter than the rest of its body. <laughs> Sarah noticed that this looks like a mohawk, Whoop, right? Let's see. I Yeah, Jen and I both just made the same observation. That was perfect timing. We noticed that the eye is really big compared to the rest of its body. I wonder why that might be. Let's see. The background is clear. I wonder where they took this photo, right? That would be really hard to get. I noticed this little dot right here. Hmm. That's actually called a nair. That's like the nostrils, but they're not the same as ours. Our nostrils help us breathe. <laughs> that is uh, strictly for sense. They can smell. They can kind of test uh, and sense what's going on around them. Now, those are all great observations, and I'm going to share some information with you about this fish. This fish right here is a baby of one of our biggest fish here at the aquarium called the giant sea bass. Now our giant sea bass were in that large exhibit that we were just checking out, but we didn't see any. So Jen's going to see if we can get an image of the giant sea bass. Looks like uh, we've got one ready. And then we're going to compare what this baby looked like oh, aha, to the adults. What do you notice right here? Hmm. I see some polka dots. I see that their fins are no longer clear. Okay. 
Um, I notice, what do you notice? <laughs> I notice that the eyes are still very big, right? Now, maybe not in, in relation to their body size, but they're very like, like uh, buggy, right? They're sticking out like a big bug right here. Check out that one. That one looks really big. Oh, I noticed just like that frogfish from earlier, they've got a frown. I wonder why that is. I wonder why a lot of fish look like they have kind of frowny shaped faces. Hmm. I wonder if it has to do with how their mouths open up. All right, my friends, so we're going to um, wrap it up here on our end, but I really want to thank you for joining us today, making observations. You are an awesome audience. If you're watching again or you're watching after we're live streaming, don't forget to text us your questions and your observations. I'm sorry, email us at live at lbaop.org. Now, we're going to be back here at 11 o'clock today talking about... Moving and grooving, one of my favorites. You're going to be joined by Jen today. She's going to get you all worked up and ready to go. Those jumping jacks that I mentioned earlier, you better get ready. So we're going to be moving and grooving at two, uh, 11 o'clock. Unfortunately, today we will not be doing our 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock streaming, but we'll be back tomorrow at 9. So join us for moving and grooving, and then we'll see you again tomorrow morning. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you later.